Hello, I'm Kevin Schwartz, Systems Engineer. And I'm Corey Lumadu, a Systems Engineer, and we are from the Michigan region of McNaught McKay Electric Company. Today we're going to talk to you about Zebra Barcode Scanning Solutions. We're going to start today's session with Zebra's handheld ultra-rugged scanning solution uh, with their DS3600 ultra-rugged scanners and EA3600 protocol converters. By default, our scanners are going to ship with DHCP enabled, so the first step is to set the IP address of these cameras. We're going to do so using the Rockwell BootP DHCP tool. We're going to select our network card and wait for the MAC address to appear. Once it does, we're going to right click and we're going to select Add Relation and then enter the IP address of the device that we would like to use for the system, in this case 192.168.1.200. And we'll say OK. Now we're going to wait for the unit to request another address. Notice now it took the IP address and it appears in the column. We're ready to go to the Zebra Industrial Ethernet Utility. Here we'll click connect and this will display a menu of all of the scanners that are available to configure. In this case we only have the one. So we'll say connect and then close out of this window. From this menu we can change what protocol we're going to use, in this case Ethernet IP, um, the IP type, whether we're going to leave it at DHCP or static. And then once you switch to static you can change the IP address and other information is needed. Um, the port configuration can be changed if that also is needed. And then once all changes are made, you need to click apply. Now an important thing to notice is that it will disconnect from the utility when you click apply. So you need to reconnect when finished. If you need to update your firmware, you will select the update firmware button. It'll launch your navigation window. You'll go to downloads and then select the firmware file that you wish to put on the scanner. This scanner was already running the latest rever revision of firmware, so it actually skipped the download, but if you took an update, it would show. Getting the scanner status, this will tell us what scanner is connected, in this case a corded scanner. And if we scan data, it'll actually appear on the next line. So now that our, or our device is configured, we can go through and open our Studio 5000 project. We're going to go over to the controller organizer, select the Ethernet tree. We're going to right click and say new module. In here, we're going to uncheck the module fil or type filter by vendor. And then we're just going to check Zebra, so it only displays Zebra items. From this list, we will grab the EA3600 Ethernet IP adapter, click Create, and this is going to pop up our module configuration window. Once that appears, we're going to give the adapter a name, in this case EA3600, and we're going to set the IP address to be what we set in the DHCP tool earlier. We'll click OK to create the module. and close. Now we're going to open the controller tags and then we're going to download to our controller. This is going to pop up the download window. We're going to accept the download. It's going to overwrite anything that is in the controller currently. And then once it's gone through and done that, it's going to ask us if we want to go to run mode we'll want to say yes to that so that we can immediately get data out of it. Now we're going to expand the output group of the EA3600 tags and we're going to set barcode transfer to 1. This is important because this is your enable for the EA3600. We're now going to go to the input side. We can see that our barcode transfer is set to 1 so our scanner is enabled and we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom where the data fields are. When we scan a code, these will populate. So in this case, I scanned a shipping label and we see that we have 35 characters and it starts with that data there. Now that you're talking to the scanner, you can now take that data and move it however you need to, um, create logic accordingly and 
that concludes our demo. So just a quick overview of Zebra's complete fixed industrial scanning and machine vision line, all four of these cameras. They're all on the same software platform and upgradable through licensing and firmware. We'll start with the FS10. This is a fixed scanner only, 1.2 megapixel, built-in light and lens, and USB connection. Next would be the FS20. Here we've got uh, same 1.2 megapixel, but this comes with ethernet and industrial micro for IO. Uh, built-in light and lens and option of PoE. Moving into the 40, we've got the uh, liquid lens and lights along with the option for two megapixel or five megapixel. These can come also with an additional ethernet connection that would allow for factory level and machine level communication. Lastly, we have the 70. This is C-mount only, so it's essentially the same as the 40, but no built-in lighter lens. All the other specifications are the same. Okay, so now that we're in the Zebra Aurora software, this is where you would set up a new device or view existing devices. Uh, this list here will show all of the recent activities and previous devices that were connected to the software. So we currently have an existing device connected, which is the FS40 fixed scanner. Uh, it's connected through USB, but you can view the IP address here. So we'll connect to this and go through manage. At this point, we have all the global information on the device. Under device details, you've got the specific information to the connected camera. Under general, this is where you can modify the beeper, power source, and the integrated LED for signaling. Under communication, we can view and edit our parameters for all industrial protocols change your IP address, and then as we scroll down here, you can select which Ethernet protocol. You've got the options of Ethernet IP, Profinet, and Modbus. Under the GPIO mapping, here we can modify the configurable I.O. from the 12-pin micro connector. So let's start a new job, call it demo. Here we have an image from the camera itself and basic settings for triggers and acquisition. We can click to live to make sure the part is positioned in the correct location. Once we come out of live view, we can set our individual triggers and then the source. From the acquisition settings, we can either manually adjust the lighting or focus, but because this camera has built-in lighting and liquid lens, we'll use the auto-tune. So the camera is running through optimal light and focus till it finds a read. Once we have a good read, it's highlighted in blue. There's our results along with at the top, we have results, the code size and the code type. From here, we'll move into the build section. This is where we'll actually build the tools. So these are the standard settings, as well as where you can select for quality metrics to grade codes. Into the advanced tab, we've got just standard settings, and then image banks. This is where we can store images and then run them through the emulator. Symbologies, as you go down through, it gives you a image of each individual symbology. The checked marked boxes are what it will automatically look for. We already know that it's a data matrix, so we can deselect all and just select data matrix. That enhances our processing time. Data formatting, you have your standard formatting tools with some additional advanced parameters. Many code gives us the option to 
view and read multiple codes within one image. At this point, we can test the application with the uh, icon below, taking multiple images as we move the part around, making sure that it still reads. And we'll move on to connect. This is where we select the image file type and where it would be stored within the industrial ethernet. Here we get the sample string. Under edit, we can append to this string which will come through in an add-on instruction. Again, we show the mapping, which we've already adjusted in the previous slide. Here we can save it. Saves to the local. And at this point, we can deploy. Now the camera is running automatically and communicating with the PLC. Thank you for watching this tech support video on Zebra Barcode Scanning Solutions. For more videos like these, please visit and subscribe to the McNaughton McKay YouTube channel.